The first questioner asked that is eating nutmeg permissible? Nutmeg in Arabic is called Jawzatul Teeb or Jawz Al Hind. You know, maybe because it started coming from India. And nutmeg is produced in India. It is grown in the southern part of India, in the states of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. But it is not the largest producer of nutmeg in the world. The largest producer and exporter of nutmeg is Indonesia. But maybe since it was exported through India, that is the reason the Arabic word Jawz Al Hind has evolved. Nutmeg is the seed of genus Myristica, or it is the seed of Myristica fragrans. And nutmeg is basically used as a spice and is put in food and delicacies like sweet dishes, it's put in cakes, it's put in pastries, it's put in variety of food, especially in the Indian subcontinent in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh or in the southern east eastern countries that including Indonesia and other countries. It is commonly used in the Indian subcontinent. It is used in baked foods, it is used in pastries, in puddings, in cakes, it is used in cooked food, in meat, in vegetables, in variety and it's a common spice. So the major use of nutmeg is as a spice and it gives that flavor because of which even the Westerners, the European, they came all the way to Southeast Asia, you know, to India and to Indonesia mainly because of finding the spice and one of them is nutmeg. Nutmeg is also used for medicinal purposes. It has got narcogenic effect and it's used in some of the psychological disorders for treatment and it has got its own medicinal purposes. Nutmeg, if taken in large quantity, has hallucinogenic, it has hallucinogenic effects. It has got narcotic effects. It can cause ecstasy, can cause drowsiness, it can cause euphoria, if taken in large quantity. But the major use of nutmeg is for spices. And the second use is for medicinal purposes. It's not used normally as a drug for ecstasy, but it can if taken in large quantities. But this nutmeg is of different type, not the same as the one we use for the spices. But natural, but if even the nutmeg that's in spices taken in large quantity in a, in a particular proportion, in a particular type, in a style, it can cause hallucinogenic effects, hallucinogenic effects. It can cause narcotic effects and it, it effects is somewhat similar to hashish and can cause euphoria, can cause ecstasy. What is the ruling on the eating of nutmeg? As far as using nutmeg as food is concerned, there are basically two groups of scholars. The opinion is divided. One group of scholar says that all the scholars unanimously agree that having nutmeg in large quantity in which there is hallucinogenic effects or narcotic effects in which a person feels drowsy or a person feels euphoria or ecstasy, it is haram. So there is no difference of opinion as far as having nutmeg in large quantity which has hallucinogenic effects. There is no difference of opinion. The difference of opinion is in having nutmeg in food as a spice. As far as eating nutmeg as a spice in food in small quantities, which doesn't have hallucinogenic effects, the scholars are divided into two opinions. One group of scholars says that because it hallucinates or has an effect of narcosis in large quantity, it is even prohibited in small quantity. Based on the hadith of beloved Prophet Muhammad of Ibn Majah, it's a Sahih hadith, volume number 4, hadith number 3393, in which the Prophet said, anything which intoxicates in large quantity is even prohibited 
in small quantity. So based on this, there is one prominent group of scholars and mainly the, the scholars of, of the Maliki Madhab, the Shafi and the Hanbali. These three schools of thought, mostly they say that eating nutmeg even as a spice in food is haram, based on this hadith. And the other group of scholars says that eating in large quantity, where it causes hallucinogen effect, it is haram, but in small quantity put in food, it doesn't cause hallucinogenic effects and doesn't cause intoxication, so it is permitted. Let us analyze these two groups of scholars. And let me tell you that the majority of the scholars belong to the opinion that nutmeg, even in small quantity, as a spice in food is haram. Based on the hadith of Ibn Majah, volume 4, hadith number 3393, that anything which intoxicates in large quantity is even prohibited in small quantity. I'm not aware whether nutmeg was av available at the time of the Prophet or the time of the Sahabas, there is no evidence. But later on, several centuries later on, the discussion on this issue started. And we know of the great scholar, Hafiz ibn Hajar al Haytimi. There are two Hafiz ibn Hajar, the other one is Asqalani, but this is the other one, and both are very famous. Somewhere around 947 Hijri about maybe 500 years back and in his fatwa he says that there were differences of opinion between the scholars of the Harmain land that time Saudi was in there but today it is Saudi Arabia in the land of Harmain and the scholars of Misr, scholars of Egypt because the scholars of Egypt they use nutmeg as a medicinal purposes so they differed so there were differences of opinion but he himself Hafiz ibn Hajar al Haytami, he says that it is, it has intoxicating effects if had in large quantity. Therefore, even in small quantity, a spice in food is haram. He was very clear cut. He's a great scholar. So he was of the opinion that even in small quantity, even in food, because of the hadith of Ibn Majah, volume 4, hadith number 3393, in which the Prophet said, anything intoxicates a large quantity is prohibited in small quantity. But we come to know from this great scholar that there was difference of opinion even 500 years back. Then we also have the great scholar, Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Daqiq al-Eid, who says that even having nutmeg in food in small quantity is prohibited because in large quantity it has intoxicating effects. So based on that, on the same hadith of the Prophet, anything intoxicates in large quantity is even prohibited in small quantity. He said it is haram even in small quantity. And there are many scholars, the list is long, but I have quoted two great scholars and majority of the scholars of the opinion based on this hadith that nutmeg even as spice in small quantity in food is prohibited. Let us try and understand the opinion of the second group of scholar. The second group of scholar who agree that nutmeg in large quantity which causes intoxicating effects and hallucination is haram, but who say that in small quantity in spices which does not intoxicate is permitted, what they do, unlike the first group of scholars, the first group of scholars unanimously put all intoxicating uh, food or substances into muskir. But the second group, they divide into different categories. They say that muskir is only liquid intoxicants. And give the example of khamar. That's in the Prophet specifically said khamar. So all intoxicants which are liquid like alcohol, beer, whiskey, vodka, these are khamar and they fall under the first category and in this category alone the Prophet said anything which intoxicates in large quantity, the hadith of Ibn Majah, volume number 4, hadith number 3393, that anything which intoxicates in large quantity is even prohibited in small quantity. But they have divided into other groups, some scholars in two groups, the second category they call is Mukhaddir. And they say Mukhaddir is an intoxicating substance, it may be solid, etc., which 
if had in large quantity will intoxicate you but these substances sometimes can also be used for medicinal purposes for example morphine we know morphine is intoxicating but it can be used as anesthesia and there are other drugs which can be used as anesthesia so if used for medicinal purposes where it relieves the pain etc so here it becomes permissible and some scholars they divide into third group called as mufakkir some info groups time will not permit to go into details but the second group of scholar they do not pull put all intoxicants in one category like the first group of scholars some scholars have said in two groups some in three some in four so when they say that the groups of intoxicants can be divided into two category the first is muskir which is liquid intoxicants like khamar wine whiskey vodka anything liquid which you drink for that ruling the hadith of the prophet of ibn maja volume number 4 hadith number 3393 anything which intoxicates in large quantity is even prohibited in small quantities but as far as the other second third or fourth group is concerned this ruling has to be analyzed but the second group unanimously agrees that any intoxicants whether it be solid whether it be other forms of substance which has been mukhaddir if you have in a quantity which intoxicates you which causes hallucinogenic effects which causes narcotic effects it is haram there is no difference of opinion but the other opinion that if it is used for medicinal purpose for a benefit it becomes permissible and they also include nutmeg in the second category called as mukhaddir that means if you have a small quantity of nutmeg in food it adds flavor to it and in no way can it intoxicate a person even if you have when you put in that food if you have a large quantity of that food whether it be pastry whether it be sweet dish whether it be delicacies whether it be food whether you have 1 kilo 5 kilo 10 kilo it will not intoxicate you so based on that they say that this is in the second category of mukhaddir so therefore we cannot say it is always haram if it is had in small quantity we does not intoxicate and as to the flavor this nutmeg is permissible and in the second group also you have great scholars though the first group is a larger number but in the second group also you have imam ar-ramli who said that nutmeg if had in large quantity which intoxicates is prohibited but if it is had put in the food in small quantity for flavor it is permissible and here we have to understand that the nutmeg that we have to put in the food is a different type altogether normally people don't use it for a drug for ecstasy that nutmeg is of a different type but i'm not saying that if you have in large quantity even the nutmeg put in food in large quantity can intoxicate you but you don't find that people normally do that there was the eighth medical fic council held in kuwait in may 1995 and in this fic council you have the experts coming from all over the world and in this eighth medical islamic fic council held in kuwait in may 1995 they had scholars of fic coming together even who are scientists who are doctors who are expert in the field they gathered together and they said that if it is from mukhaddir that is something which intoxicates if you have in large quantity but if it is used for medicinal purposes during operations and otherwise it is permissible they specifically even took the name of nutmeg that nutmeg if had in small quantity to add flavor to the food it is permissible however if it's had in large quantity where it causes hallucinogenic effects or narcotic effects where there is ecstasy or euphoria or drowsiness it is prohibited and imagine in this fic council you have top scholars and but natural it was lately you know hardly about 26 years back and you know science is advanced so there are scientists as quran says in surah nahl chapter 16 verse 43 and surah anbiya chapter number 21 verse number 7 fas alu ahli zikri in kuntum la talamun so these scholars besides the scholars of fiqh they also are understanding of science of technology and of medicine so this it's not an opinion of one particular person or one particular scholar a group 
well versed in the field, so they cannot be neglected. I do agree with the first group of scholars that say nutmeg given in food is, is prohibited. They are saying there are a large number of scholars, great scholars, but you can't just overlook what is said by this Islamic Fiqh Medical Council. I'll give you a name of another great scholar by the name of Dr. Wahabad Az-Zohili. He's very famous. He has written volumes of books on fatwa. And he also says that nutmeg, if, food, if put in the food, a small quantity, for flavor, it, and it doesn't cause any intoxication, it is permissible. However, if it's eaten directly in large quantity and causes hallucinogenic effects, or intoxicates you, then it is prohibited. And Dr. Wahabad Azueli is a very famous scholar. So here we have two group of scholars, and I do agree that in the first group who say nutmeg even as a spice in food is prohibited, that's a larger group and a bigger group. But even the second group cannot be neglected. And among the contemporary, among the late scholars with all the science and evidence, you have many people who have agreed with the second fatwa also. And I being a doctor and coming from the background of science, I, I do agree even with the view of the second group of scholars, but there's something like fatwa and something like taqwa. So if you ask personally, I would advise the Muslims that when in doubt, leave it out. I would advise the Muslims that don't put nutmeg in your food. Though both the fatwas have their own value, both cannot be rejected, both have the argument, the second fatwa backed with science, etc. But both group of scholars have their own reasoning and logic, which cannot be just put aside. But there is a ruling which is known as that when there is a way of exiting from the differences. Al-Khuruj min al-Khilaf. Exiting from the difference. It's a qaeda of fiqh. That when you can exit from the difference, especially when both the rulings are of top authentic scholars. So best is to take that side in which no will object. For example, the first group of scholars says that even putting in food is haram, eating large quantities is haram, even putting in food in small quantities haram. The second group of scholars says eating nutmeg in large quantities haram, but small quantities food is permissible. But if someone follows the first group of scholar, no scholar from the second group will say that putting, not putting nutmeg in food is haram. They not say. They say it's permissible, but eating is not farm. So if you follow the first group of scholar, you are exiting from the defense. Al-Khuruj min al-Khalaf. So, especially when the evidence is quite solid on both the side, we put this ruling. This ruling will not be put if the difference of opinion and one group is based on Sai Hadith, the other on Zai Hadith, then you follow the Sai. If the difference of opinion is clear cut that when you put the usul of fiqh and of all the rulings, etc., and it's evident, then you don't use this rule that exiting from the difference. This is only used when both the arguments are strong. And this is a good example, whether nutmeg can be put in food as a spice or not. So this is a good example. So here, one comes fatwa and one comes taqwa. So though I agree that both the groups are correct, and I wouldn't say they're wrong, but I use that when in doubt, leave it out, I would use this qaeda here of fiqh, that al-khuruj min al-khilaf. Exiting from the difference, so therefore I would advise the Muslim brothers and sisters, even if it's tasty, when in doubt, leave it out. So I would advise the Muslim brothers and sisters that don't put nutmeg in your food. But as a dai, I have to give both the opinions, though I may agree with both the group of scholars in their own way, but my, my I would agree putting off that, that avoiding is the best. So I would request all the Muslims, brothers and sisters, that you should not put nutmeg in your food as a spice. That answers the question of the first sister.